All right, everybody. Here we are back again. We're starting a new, um, a brand new uh, series. I think this is season two now. Uh, and uh, we're going to go, we're going to keep the name of the show as Basics. And we're going to go forth with Production Basics, basically. It just gives me an excuse to talk about producing and, and making tracks, which uh, is, uh, to me, a very fun thing. Andrew Duke is here. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Andrew Duke, if, if nobody knows uh, or anybody wants to know, is a legend. He's been around. I mean, I, I think he's just been around forever. He, he's ubiquitous in time. Um, he's busy prepping for Hurricane Teddy. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> right on. Um, okay, so um, here we are. We're going to be discussing production today. And as you know, we are, first of all, you know what you're actually watching. This is 343 TV. Um, we're here every day at 1 p.m. And we stream. I, I don't know exactly what happens on the weekends. Wait, I do. Actually, a friend of mine, John Selway, will have his show tomorrow uh, for his Techno Saturday. And Sunday, I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure what happens. But I know that there's plenty of really cool shows uh, that we have going on on Wednesday, I covered for uh, Louis Beck uh, for his uh, hybrid home studio show. Uh, yesterday, I was watching uh, Max with his um, with his show, his uh, Theory Thursdays. Uh, yesterday, he was getting all into the circle of fifths, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. And of course, of course, Doltrick on Mondays for her tips and tricks. Uh, that one. You, you really shouldn't miss. I'm a re really big fan of of uh, Claire, which we all know as Doltrick. So yeah, we're here on Fridays, and uh, yeah, I'm going at it uh, a bit solo today. Um, well, actually, there might be a little surprise for somebody coming in a little later as a little bit of a guest. And uh, let's see who's in the chat. TWD Industries, always great to see you always here um I, I actually don't remember a stream that i've done that twd industries has not been in um oh bpmf live oh now i'm nervous bpmf i wanted bpmf to come in for today for the show uh but he's he's busy doing a, a bunch of uh, stuff uh and he couldn't really make it but bpmf is an amazing producer he's been around I don't know. I think uh, just about as long as I have, because I think we're about almost the same age. <laughs> and but he's making music. I, I met him in my early days of, of exploration with with uh, with equipment and, and and all that. And uh, and he he was already really well on his on the road to like making amazing music. So he's been making music since I guess sometime in the late eighties, early nineties, and uh, have collaborated with him in the past in in uh, many ways uh and together working on tracks maybe releasing some of his music on my labels and um maybe also we had a, a group together a band let's say called the rancher relax all-stars which uh john selway is also part of you know john from uh 343 as well and yeah he's he's sitting there in in and uh uh, in the uh, chat today, just uh, kind of watching. All right. But I think in, in one of these future shows, I'm going to have him in. I'm going to uh, strive to have people come in, uh, producers especially, since this is a production show, to just kind of discuss uh, their approach to things. Today's show, uh, oh, look at that. Max Wilde is here. Oh, no, now I'm really nervous. Max is uh, <laughs> Max is our, our, our boss. And, and okay, now that Max is here, I have to tell everybody, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. Um, please at least give us a like because, you know, that way at least I, I get some brownie points with uh, with Max. Um, let's see. Andrew Duke says, funny you ask. I often get misunderstood, uh, mistagged on Facebook as Abe. <laughs> Wonder if that happens to him, vice versa. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I tend to not pay attention to what's going on on Facebook. Um I am. I have a presence on there, and from time to time, I do things on there. But I, I tend to have like a filter about things, and I just kind of gloss things over. And I used to be on Facebook a lot more than I am these days, uh, meaning active on Facebook. I think a lot of people are the same way. But social media altogether, I think the only thing I'm I'm pretty active on these days is TikTok. Check out my TikTok, Abe Duque. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, Jonathan Rodriguez is here. Hey, Jonathan, glad to see you come back. Um, Andrew Duque it says BPMF Live. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Pretty funny. All right. So, yeah, so please subscribe. We're trying to get 1 million uh, followers or subscri subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, if not, I'm going to be in trouble with my boss, Max. And give us a like and give us a dislike if you don't like what you see. I'm, I'm okay with that as well. I don't. I don't mind. Leave comments. Um, as always, I'm going to tell you guys uh, again, and I got to reinforce this because I need you guys to start doing this, is start dropping questions as soon as you get into the chat uh, for, for us to discuss because I really love to go back and forth with your questions. I really like to engage you guys in the chat. I really want to see you guys uh, and what you're and, and listen to you guys as concerns and, and, and try to figure out or, or get to know your challenges so that maybe together we can kind of explore these. So uh, if you have some time or if you feel inclined, please go ahead and drop some comments or, and questions, especially for us in the chat. And from time to time, we comp I compile the questions that, that happen either in the chat or in, in you know, emails or Facebook or, or whatever, and, and, and I'll bring them. Today, I have no, no, no compiled questions. I'm just kind of uh, winging it. Anyway, today's uh, first show, and I guess, I guess you see by the title on this uh, stream, it's uh, The Production Mindset. And I wanted to discuss uh, what it is uh, that, that we need to do before we actually start producing to get our minds kind of ready for this. So we've decided to be a producer. <laughs> now, you know, you know, a lot of people kind of put the cart before the horse and 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 to be honest, sometimes what happens is, you know, people see production as a uh, vehicle to becoming famous as maybe a DJ or some sort of thing like that. So what they say was to themselves is, oh, wow, I would like to DJ everywhere. But I realized that some of the best DJs have... Um, have uh, amazing productions and because of their productions people are often you know um booking them because if they have a hit record or if people know that they're on these special labels or or for whatever reason productions seem to be the way to get work or whatever so a lot of people approach this this uh production idea from that angle from the angle of um of basically you know uh, getting some work, so kind of a, a means to an end. Um, and, and so that's okay. You're, you're allowed to do that. You're actually allowed to do whatever you want. But uh, there could also be other motivations for why you might want to get into production and why you might want to, um, you know, make music and produce music. Uh, one of them, and so let's say that, that, that on one side of the spectrum is the, um, is the, the person that uses, is, is totally a user of their productions towards, uh, to, to get, uh, some sort of goal. Like, Hey, I got bookings now because I got, uh, some amazing productions. Let's say that's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is the person that comes in and makes music, but really wants to purely just make something that, that, that moves them. I'll tell you a little story. I had a, I had a student once. I, I used to teach at this place called Dubspot. I had a student, uh, and at Dubspot, the way we would do it, we would do our classes, and every end of the of every um, sort of cycle or or, or or level we used to call them, we had um, we would have everybody present the track that they did for that level. Everybody was expected to sort of make a a track for for that uh, level. Um, and so this was actually at the end of the very end of the whole of the whole uh, six levels that we had there. And, you know, the students played their stuff. Everybody was playing stuff. We were all having a good time. It's usually a really nice uh, environment when we kind of just listen and have fun and everybody gives a little bit of feedback or whatever. Uh, but there was this one student who was kind of a quiet guy most of the time, but very serious and very studious and into what, you know, all the things that, that, that we were, um, that we were doing. Um, and this guy, um, presents, comes, uh, comes up and presents his track and plays us this music that he wrote for this level. Now I had come into this level to just teach these, these, uh, I was going to say kids, but you know, I think of my students as kids sometimes. So think of, you know, teach these kids, uh, 
in the in the last level. So I didn't really know his music beforehand. I just knew that he was working on music, and and, and that day was like the first day that I'd really hear a full composition from from his music. And um, when he played the music, I think not only me but everyone else in in the in the classroom was shocked. We were like. Oh my goodness! It was one of the most amazing productions, one of the best music. It was, it was, it was moving. It was really moving. I was so, I was, I was really, you know, taken aback. Like, wow, this is this is something. You know, this has a future. And I immediately, you know, I had pr previously before I had this kind of education career, I, I was more in the kind of, you know making productions, DJing, moving back and forth between all that. So I was always like in this kind of understanding at least that productions can aid your uh your your your, your career, your your music career. Your I mean not your music career but your DJ career. So I was like, "Oh wow, you know, I wonder what he's going to do." So at the end when he played it, everybody clapped, people were really excited about it. Uh everybody loved it. Uh and then I asked him, I said, "So what are you going to do with this track?" What what's your plan for this track? Uh, do you have um, do you have uh, maybe you're going to shop it to some labels or what 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 exactly is your plan now? I mean, what are you going to? I was sure that you know this something this great has to be uh, moved and promoted, and he stopped for a second and thought, and then he said, "Well, I was thinking I would play it for my aunt." <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay." And then maybe if she likes it, I might play it for my mom. And then I was like, okay. And and then? And he was like, no, that's it. That's all I really care about. That's all I really want to do about this. And I couldn't get it in my brain because my brain was still so conditioned to thinking about making production towards, you know, getting, making a means to an end that um, that I thought, okay, this, is, this can't be. But then I realized, wow, yeah, there are people and there are musicians and producers that are making music for pure reasons, for reasons of just just expressing themselves, just laying it down, and and uh, and and you know making that happen. So that's the spectrum. This is the 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 total usage of, of production and music towards getting your goals met, and totally just using uh, or making music to express yourself and to create something that you maybe needed to create. So. What, one of the things that we need to understand before we start making any music is, um, is where do we stand on this spectrum? What is it that we're trying to do? Are we trying to um, impress our aunt or our mom? Or are we, maybe not even them, maybe you're just making it for yourself? Or are you in that mindset of like making music for, um, for, for use you know, to take it to a commercial level. Or do you, where do you stand? Maybe you stand somewhere in between. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe it's you're right in the middle. Maybe you more towards this side than the other side. But you need to understand what your, what, really what your, 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 um, your goals are. So that, now that that's understood, then we need to understand what the music will sound like. And so you have to have, and I, I hate to word, use a word like vision for something that's sonic, but you do have to have a vision for what the sound should be, if that makes any sense. You have to have an understanding of what you're shooting for. Um, a lot of times people just want something awesome. <laughs> yeah, all the time I want something awesome, that's for sure. But it's not enough to just want something that's amazing. You have to have a detailed understanding of what it is and what it's not uh, unless you're just up, up for exploration or um, experimentation which is also really okay but if that's the case then that's your target so we need we need a target we need something to uh, to, to shoot for something to understand uh, okay that's uh, that's where where I want to be something that inspires you so if you're if you're a DJ and you're playing music and and you're using your music that you're producing in order to try to get you more gigs or whatever, uh, maybe then you should pick some of the music that you think is and I'm being completely pragmatic and and you know devoid of any any art here, but maybe you should just pick the music that you coldly can calculate would probably get you the most uh, impact with your wanted uh, or targeted audience. 
Um, that that is one way of going about it. Um, or if you're looking to be maybe uh, to to build your own thing and create your you know a new thing um, that uh, that that doesn't necessarily follow somebody else, even then you still have to have this kind of vision in your head about this whole thing. And in the meantime, let me see what's happening here on the in the chat. So um, just to see. Uh, Maxwell getting ready for Hurricane Teddy uh, be likely to hit us uh, um, like Hurricane Juan did in 2003. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get ready for that one. That's a that's a concerning thing. I hope everybody's gonna be okay on that. Um, he's in Halifax and on the east tip of Canada, and gets a lot of hurricane action in the fall here. Um, well, okay, we're thinking about you. Stay safe. Um, Andrew, we need you around for another forever since you've been around already forever. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else, buddy? Let's see. Frida Henson says, so nice to be here. Thanks for doing this. Ready to have productive morning. Cheers from Los Angeles. Hello, Los Angeles. Um, let's see. Jonathan Rodriguez says, enjoy your uh, content, Abe. Good stuff. Thanks again, Jonathan. I've seen you before. Uh, I'm I'm very happy that 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 you're enjoying this. It, it's it is a little bit, you know, uh, hard to keep on coming up with fresh content or things to talk about, uh, especially when you're kind of just talking into a camera. But uh, knowing that you guys are there really kind of helps. Uh, let's see. Uh, BPMF says uh, none of these people are criminals. I don't know what he's talking. about. <laughs> none of those people are criminals. Um, uh, here, here we go. Um, Max says, and then mom is tough though. Okay. I don't know what BPMF is talking about. Um, okay. So let's see. Robert Dharma says, electronic music as folk music to entertain your mom and aunt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess everybody's referring to the story that, that I told about, you know, the mindset that this particular um, person was in. Uh, if you can win over your parents, you rule. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, I always used to try to make my sisters listen to my music, and they never liked it. They always thought it was horrible. You know, <laughs> whatever. Andrew Duke says, BPMF uh, uh, live. Yep, my sister has a degree in music. My mom is a retired music teacher. I can even plan a song without... I can't even play a song without picking at the keys. I can't even play any. Okay, so he, he he has no talent, I guess, <laughs> or he says he has no talent. <laughs> All right, um, right. So uh, here we go. Uh, let's keep going here. So so yeah. Now you know just to, just to kind of give you as a pep talk about what we're going to be you know talking about all throughout this uh, phase of our uh, of of my show, which is probably going to go a month of us talking about production. I just wanted to to kind of lay down, you know, kind of the, the, the foundation of what it is to um to to be a producer and to um know what production is. So the next thing you need to know is of course you need to know your tools. You need to know what it is you're working with and what it is that you can work with. And you know, a lot of the times uh that becomes a big um you know a big challenge or a big obstacle in the way for a lot of people. Uh, since uh, it can be a really high learning curve. Now, I know a lot of you that are in here are enthusiasts that have been, you know, that 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 and 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 some of you are professional um, and 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 desire to have what you know more. <laughs> uh, but the um, I kind of lost my train of thought because I was like looking at the chat for a second because I see Chris Portanova is in there. Abe, what's up, Paul? All is well. Hey, Chris. Sorry, you guys are distracting me. <laughs> on the chat and who else is in here shaman 777 uh daily mindset and habits etc yes this is what we're talking about so um so we're, we're just we're just discussing how and what we need to be uh doing in our heads before we start making music and we were just talking about now knowing your 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 um your tools and as I was saying, the producers that are, you know, seasoned and those that are trying to uh, get going with this stuff, well, they have a, um, we all have a learning curve that never ends. Like, I'm here with you guys. I've been doing this since sometime in the late 80s, but 
I'm constantly learning about new ways of doing things. I'm learning about new equipment. I'm learning about new techniques. Things are changing. The the what people or or techniques that are that are that are relevant to our time are changing. For example, when I first started in the late '80s, uh, the way that bass was um, considered was not, um, let's say, uh, the way that we consider bass now. Uh, I remember in the 80s, uh, an engineer, an audio engineer would kind of, if you went to the on the console and tried to put up the bass, they would slap your hand and be like, hey, you're going to mess up the mix. You can't put up too much bass. And the truth is, uh, you know, somewhere between Jamaican dub and and, and crazy German bass and, and, and techno and house and hip hop, uh, bass slowly got more and more and more, um, uh, well, focused on and, and to the point that we're in the electronic music uh, or all the mu dance music that we have now has really copious amounts of bass, so much so that you know equipment had to be developed in order to handle it. Like the the speakers that we use today and the headphones that we use today are are able to 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 handle really lots of bass uh, because of that. So things are continuing to change, is what I'm saying in the um, in the way that uh, and the, the way that things are perceived and used. And, and techniques uh, that that happen in production. So you have to be aware of all these things, and you have to wear, be aware of, uh, of course, your, your your tool. Now, if you want to work in the, inside of the computer, that's probably a smart idea these days because it's easy to to get going. You can just buy a cheap computer and get yourself some you know something to start with. You could start with something even as as, as simple as like Ableton Light or or even GarageBand if you wanted to. Um, you know, soon you might want to uh, upgrade to something better, maybe like Bitwig or Ableton Suite or, or whatever, or Logic. Um, but eventually, you know, you, 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 you're going to want to have some, you know, master that, that part of the, of the tools. Um, some people don't want that. There's a big movement these days for dollars jamming, they call it, where uh, some people just want to use the stuff that you see behind me, gear, and they just want to kind of like, play with it, make really live kind of organic uh, music, and then record that. Um, and, but that you need to know yourself as well as far as uh, what, what you're going to be doing. So have a clarity. Really, clarity is really the, the, the main uh, kind of takeaway from this whole thing. Have a clarity about what you want to do, for what reason you want to do it, and then do your due diligence at getting all your, um, uh, all your uh, skills up to par. Anyway, let's look at the chat and see what's going on. Herbert Dharma says uh, in Wednesday's studio stream, he talked about keeping your gear wired up and ready for when inspiration hits. And yeah, it's a great that's a great point. Uh, right now, as we speak, I have uh, some gear that I threw up together here. Um, let's see, uh, where's my overhead? And I believe we should be looking at my overhead now. Um, yeah, so there's, there's some, some gear in here. It's all wired up. i made sure that everything was working. Like, you know, things are going to start and stop, uh, with, with, uh, when I'm ready to go. Uh, this is, this is some kind of go-to gear that I kind of enjoy starting with a lot of the time. Um, uh, these days it's, this, this drum machine is a very simple and, and, and cheap drum machine, but it, but it does have a lot of power, um, uh, in it. Uh, and it's quick to like get going with something, uh, so I if I have it always at the ready. Uh, I'm a you know if if you guys have ever followed any of my career, you guys know that I've done a lot of stuff with the the 303. Uh, I, these days I I just got my my real my old school my real uh, original 303 repaired, uh, but I kind of shelved that and I'm using this uh, TT 303 these days uh, because it has a lot more functionality than even the old one did. So I, I have that ready, and I have this guy here ready to go, uh, which I think I muted right now. So I have the I have the 909 over here, which I'm I can shift the camera to going. So that's also going. That's actually not playing from there, which you hear now. Um, and then where was, I have a 303 happening here. It's all ready to go. And this guy over here, I guess somehow. No, that's not that. Let's see. Somehow the. Uh, Sometimes these connections get a little bit squirrely, but the point is that I'm ready to go. And yes, being ready to go is is definitely 
the thing that uh, we should be. So throughout these next few sessions, I want to start slowly talking about my process um, uh, when it comes to creating a track. And um, not only that, but I want to bring in some other people in order to uh, talk to them a little bit about their process and how they um, and how they um, go about uh, producing and thinking about what they're going to produce and actually delivering on a production. Um, so uh, right now, let's see in the chat we have uh, BPMS says AM Radio Man. Uh, I don't know what he means by that. And, and the bass race, yes, I think we know what he is talking about with the bass race. And we're about the half point of the show right now. And I wanted to uh, just take a little time to talk about what we're here doing. This is a uh, 34T TV for those that um, that have um, joined us and have been are here for the first time. Uh, hopefully, there's a lot of first timers here. Uh, 343 TV, uh, we, we, we stem from a school called 343 Labs. It's a bunch of friends and people, like-minded people, a lot of people that came from a school called Dubspot, which uh, was kind of an amazing movement uh, that uh, actually went out in a ball of fire <laughs> when, it, when it died. And uh, a lot of us, you know, really like to be around each other. And, 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 and people like Max and, and, and a guy named Nacho decided to come on, let's put it together and let's keep this going. And so we are kind of, uh, we're here, um, you know, just making, keeping that vibe going that, that, that we had once all enjoyed together. Uh, and we actually run a school now, 343 uh, Labs is a school. Uh, we have a location here in New York where I am. Um, we have classes going on here in New York. Um, we have classes going on in Berlin, in the location in Berlin, uh, which is, you know, we have, so we're not New York, Berlin, we're getting there, we're getting, it's, it's, ex, we're expanding in a, in a magnificent way, if you think. And because of pandemic or our pandemic or COVID, we really went ham on the, on the, uh, internet, on the interwebs, <laughs> uh, meaning that we uh, we were already teaching online before uh, COVID hit, which was, you know, uh, quite fortunate for us because a few of our instructors, including myself, were already teaching online, and we already had a, a, a kind of a, a an understanding and 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 a and a little bit of experience with the setup. So the setup was really there. Um, and once COVID hit, we just went straight to online. We trained up everybody, all the other uh, instructors and everybody kind of got with it and took, took, we took to it like a fish to water. And we're, we have a very strong presses online now. We have a lot of classes uh, available online. If you want to go out to our website, there's 343labs.com and there's also 343labs.de, I believe, for Germany. Uh, you can go and check out uh, our class schedules uh, both for the physical classes and for the online classes and come down one of these days and join us and have a, have a, have a, have a good time with us in our, um, in our classes. So, um, all right, uh, let's, uh, let, let's keep going here. Once again, please subscribe, please hit the like button, please do all that stuff. I'm, I'm really going to get in trouble if I can't get 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. Um, uh, John Selway's here. Uh, well, look at that. John Selway's writing on the chat. Uh, Billboard Shaw. We teach music theory and the beginner production courses. That's right. John is another one of our instructors, and uh, John is uh, John is probably uh, John's responsible actually for me getting into into education. He one day when he was teaching at Dove Spots uh, a, a bit before I was teaching there, and he called me up one day. He was like, "Hey, do you feel like teaching?" And I was like. Hmm. I was thinking of getting off the road anyway. Why not? And uh, from that, you know, John and I worked for many years at Dubspot, and now we're back here together again at 343 Labs. Matter of fact, I think we could bring in John to talk to us right now. Um, what do you say? Let's see if we can find John and uh, bring him in to our conversation here. Hey, John, there you are. How are you doing? What's up, babe? How's it going? Uh, it's going well. Um, I'm just handling this uh, this show here on my own, kind of growing up to 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 being a, a, a you know a grown up streamer 
being able to handle the chat, the technical aspect of things, getting everything kind of looking good and, and sounding good and sounding like I know what I'm talking about somehow and not uh, not sounding like an idiot. <laughs> we, we used to have Thomas in here, you know, keeping us uh, on the on the straight and narrow. But now, you know, we, we you know, Thomas has a lot of work. So we kind of Thomas can't be around. So we've been told to like, come on. You know, buckle up, <laughs> buckle in, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps and, and get in there and, and do the shows. But now I have John here. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm good. Just having a, you know, the middle of the afternoon here is quiet. Uh, online, you know, remote school for my kids has started. It's been a little hectic. But uh, things seem to be under control today. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you asked to, if I could chat a little bit and on, well, on actually, the show, and I'm uh, happy to do it. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is that you have a show starting tomorrow. Yeah. Your show used to be on what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. It was Taco Tuesdays, right? That That's right. Show? Yes. Taco <laughs> Techno Tuesdays. <laughs> right. So <laughs> your Taco Tuesday show, uh, tech, I'm sorry, Techno Tuesday show is moving Oh, look at that. There's the, there's the graphic right there. <laughs> it's moving to Saturdays. And tomorrow you'll be on, um, you'll be on, uh, and what's tomorrow? What, what is that? I saw the, the, the promo for it and I was like, what is this thing that it's being promoted there? What, what well, is there's this free plugin that came out recently by Newfangled Audio called Pendulate. What, and it looks it? really cool. What is it? It's well, got... just tell me about it. Give me a preview because I, I don't even know about it. Well. Well, See, I'd show you right I'm now. Learning, I'm learning. I'm learning myself. But... What's that? It's um. I'd show you right now, but uh, the screen sharing is not set up. But That's fine. Basically... But you could maybe explain a little bit of what we're dealing with. I, I have no idea if it's a if it's audio interface, if it's a. I mean, not only oh. if it's an audio uh, effect or if it's a MIDI uh, instrument or if it's a sequence. I have no idea what we're talking about. So it is a synthesizer. It's a mono synth, so it can only play one note at a time. And it has a different kind of more complex oscillator. You know, you usually in like like a simple subtractive synth, like a Moog or like a like an old 303 or whatever, you'll have one oscillator and it'll be making a sawtooth wave or a square wave, and that's it. Yeah, um, BPMF says and, it sounds kinky. <laughs> <laughs> I just read that. The, uh, Pendulate has this chaos situation where it's it um, and it's called Pendulate because it's using this idea of uh, pe how pendulums move and multiple pendulums and how multiple things bounce off of each other and it creates really complex wave shapes so it sounds really crazy and it's i think i, I listen to you know there's some demos of it on youtube and everything um and it reminds me a little bit of some of what fm synthesis can do um but it's a different way of approaching that tone and it's going to be really great for techno and electro and why is it free? noises and I'm sorry. Why is it free? Well, Newfangled Audio developed a, a paid plugin for uh, to Eventide, I think, and it's a poly, more powerful polyphonic version of Pendulate uh, that you know that costs money. So Pendulate's like the hey, come check out our new synth. It's free. It's monophonic. It's simple. And they just gave that away. And then a couple weeks later, they're like, oh, and here's our big polyphonic one that you can buy so yeah it's like the simple version of uh i see of the other one yeah oh great so i and i like the idea of uh of looking into free plugins it's always something with students you know they're not sure you know maybe they don't want to spend all the money on serum or whatever or all the native instrument stuff there's plenty of really cool free plugins out there and demos and things um uh so i thought it'd be fun to look at some of those in, in the shows and then also um the idea for for the show tomorrow is that I'm trying out a new synth almost like I've, I've just looked at this once. I haven't done it yet. So it's going to be kind of like not like an unboxing, but, you know, like this is the first look and I'm, I'm going to try to make uh, start a track. I hope it goes well. <laughs> oh, no, it will. And, uh, you know, OK, I'm going to prepare a little but <laughs> it, It's going to be like explorative and like how I approach making music in, in, with new. And I think that ties in really well with your subject today, because um, one of the ways one of the things that I do as a producer to get going if I'm like stuck for an idea or you know I'm just need to be woken up a little bit is to like you know because I love making crazy noises and playing with synthesizers is um to start getting a musical idea from playing with a sound or a new device and I will find inspiration 
for composition and for arranging and for the whole deal just by starting with one new thing that's like fresh. So that's kind of the idea here is that, you know, and that's what I would contribute to your kind of producer mindset uh, idea today is if you're stuck and you, you're looking for something new to do and you, you want to uh, take a step forward and kind of just allow yourself to play with a new thing and discover uh, from a sound a musical idea and then take it from there. Do you always know what you're going to do before you do it? Like what type of music you're going to make before you, before you start? Um, sometimes. Making... Uh oh, hey, we've got a cameo. What's up, Otto? Otto's gonna. <laughs> sometimes I ask my kids to 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 give me a, a. They 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 want you know they say hey make a song that sounds like Sia and I'm like okay I'll try but I don't really do pop music. Okay. Hey, I'm I'm online live right now and I'm talking to Abe. Can you wait a few minutes? <laughs> Thanks. See you later. Okay. So, <laughs> that's what happens when you work at home nowadays in COVID. So sometimes I have a specific idea, like maybe someone asked me to do a remix and I'll listen to their parts and I'll kind of pick out what I like. And then that makes it easier actually for me to get started. That's another thing, like is once you get some skills and some tools on your belt that you know how to use, um, remixes can be really kind of liberating because it frees you from the composition. You're just like, oh, here's the song, here's the melody, here's the beat. And then you're like, oh, okay, play. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll, when I do a remix, I'll hear, I'll get an idea just from what they did. And then I'll have a goal. I'll say, okay, I'm going to do like a dark techno remix of this because I think that's a nice contrast to the light and fluffy melody that they did. You know, um, when it comes to my own stuff, you know, a lot of times what I just was talking about, about getting an inspiration from the synth, from the instrument itself, I do that a lot. That's, I would say I do that more often than not. Is that especially with techno and playing, you know, with music where it's all about how you, the the sound and how you manipulate the sound, um, it's less about the like writing a melody uh, up front, in, if, uh, depending on your style. So I do that a lot. Um, other times it might be, you know, let's say I have a relationship with a record label. Uh, I do. Uh, some of you know I work with Christian Smith a lot, and that's kind of like my more like mainstream, full on power techno direction that I do. Business techno. And, you know, Biz, yeah, I say <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's it. I like. Where does it. that lie and on it, that it, spectrum that I was talking about? It's like fun party music. But you know, like you can't. I can't diss it. So he and I have a, have been a long term relationship, and we have a sound that we've developed over the years. So when we work together, we will decide what our goal is. We'll say, okay, today we're going to make like a track that's got a, a a melodic hook to it, and has like. You know, we'll just think of details that we want to hear in the track. Like, okay, let's find a vocal or make a vocal sample. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about, like, do we want a really powerful kick or do we want, like, a lighter kick with maybe, like, more in the bass line? Or, you know, like, there's, we'll, we'll decide ahead what we want the style to be and make a clear goal to reach. And then that actually makes it easier to make the decisions along the yeah. way. Because if you already know what you want to get and you have the skills to get there, you can say, okay, that's the wrong kick. This is the right kick. That's the right melody. This is the wrong melody. You, it makes it easier to make your your decisions that's, along that's the journey. Pretty, it's pretty crazy because I know I know your music and I know that you have a lot of different hats that you wear as far as styles. Like uh, there's that stuff that you do with Christian Smith. Then there's uh, the stuff that uh, you do uh, as I guess. Uh, well, which one do we want to pick? The stuff you did on CSM. Well, the stuff you yeah. did at. The, the, the you know you have the the stuff you do with uh, Jason Sostek as uh, you know in, in for Serotonin Records, which is uh, is definitely completely different than mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, how do you keep it separate? How do you shift it to these different mindsets? All right, well, um, I I could look at it one, two ways on on the more kind of positive like. Not okay. Not that either direction is not positive, but it's just sort of different facets of how I think about it. But um, musically, I like to listen to lots of kinds of music, and my musical training from a very young age has been very diverse. You know, from classical to you know folk and jazz to what we do now. Right? I've always listened to lots of and enjoyed and tried to understand a lot of different kinds of music. Hmm. You know, as deeply as I can, as deeply as I'm capable, and. So it makes sense from that respect to 
make lots of different kinds of music because I enjoy the result. Like, oh, you know, I, I, I like hard, weird techno. I like nerdy electro funk. I like, you know, business techno. I like Rancho Relaxo, like chill out ambient stuff like that we all used to do together. Um, you know, all these different things are all types of music that I enjoy listening to and then making. On the flip side of that, I'm a very moody person. My, I, I, my artistic output depends a lot on how I feel at the moment. And also, I mean, to be fully honest, I, I'm like a, an ADD person my whole life. I've had trouble like with executive decision making and like focusing on one thing for a long time. So it totally makes sense from that point of view that I would hop from this to this to this to this because my, oh, uh, now I want to do electro. Oh, now I want to do techno. Now I want to do house. Now I want to do ambient. It's because I'm like, you know, that's just how I am. Um, if you see me laughing, it's I'm not laughing at what you're saying. It's just I'm looking at the chat and <laughs> Andrew Duke <laughs> put in a, a small, small business. business techno? Techno. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> 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 so business techno, if people don't know what it, what it is, is I mean, I guess it's the techno that's made on, with a more commercial edge and it's made to like get you gigs at festivals. I guess that's the, the, the ultimate goal. Yeah, so, I think the style of it, it part of it is, you know, commercial minded, like, but how did it get that way in the beginning? And honestly, it's purely a function of what works at that scale. It's, it's, you have thousands of people in an outdoor festival with a massive sound system. And certain types of music sound better on that system, in that environment. That music doesn't sound as good in a different space. It, it, it's like the, the music evolved to fit the 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 feeling and of the venue of the of of the architecture of the venue i mean even like there was or someone wrote an article about this about bearkind like bearkind techno exists because that of how that building is shaped and how it sounds in that room on the main floor so would you like say there's certain something, types of music sound good in different spaces would you say there is a uh, anything like a uh, business electro <laughs> sure absolutely and it, it's silly that's what uh, serotonin I, 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 this, does huh yeah. No. Okay. For me, like, all right, business, anything, whatever. I, let's not look at it that way. Let's look at it like the music of uh, it, you know, evolved to fit a certain circumstance. And okay, maybe that's making money. Right. So, <laughs> so but, but look, let, let's just stay, stay in the topic you could here. Make a track. I mean, we could go like, on on the rant about. We could go sorry. on. A, sorry, we could go on a rant about those right. stuff. But but this yeah. is good because it's, let's, let's it just bring it bring it in into what we're trying to talk about with uh with with, with the production mindset. Is okay. that we really need to understand what it is that we're getting ourselves into is the is the I guess the big takeaway that we sure. need to know we have to know if we're really about the business techno then we need to be you know I guess we need to be aware of what's working you know what's getting booked what's getting you know what's uh what tracks are, are being listed what artists are hot and which ones are getting you know features and in, in, in publications and so on and uh, and then try to emulate it not my, my, my not not my preferred way of going about it but mm. uh that is probably i've seen this 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 has happened since uh the beginning of my um, of my uh my career i remember in in the 80s sitting in the studio with, with 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 producers and they were like okay well it's you know what's hot right now it's like you know just try to kind of get on the tails of what was hot right now and uh to, to try to commercially maximize the whole situation so if that's what you're trying to do, okay, that's one thing. But and I think what I was saying earlier about having that goal, mm -hmm. like you have this kind of limited set of of things that make up a genre that you're focusing on, and what you're going to do with it, and then that informs your creative decisions, what artistically or production wise. Like you could actually probably you could set out um, a result that you want to achieve. And like, okay, I want to make tracks that sound good at Bearkind, fine. Or I want to make tracks that Adam Bayer might play at a fest at a drum code uh, area at a festival once these things start happening again. Like, but you want to do it in a different way. Like that would be an artistic challenge. Is how do I make my artistic decisions that are personally like what I'm into translate in that environment and that with that goal in mind? I think that's leading me to another thing is that like working within limitations is really important. Whatever Do you ever doing. make music just for the heck of it without any idea what's going to happen? Um, I used to more. And I think that's what like happened, what John. Well, 
what happened is making a career out of music has it happened. It's the, that's the thing, and that's the when that's new the, and fresh and excited and everything's amazing and you're learning constantly. You could you know there's that's no the problem. Once you introduce pressure. money into something like the or the need to you know to get money out of what you're doing, then all these certain ideals have to kind of be shoved into a corner somewhere. And you have to repurpose everything in order to kind of fit with your with your principles in order to make it happen. Or you sell out completely, like I did. <laughs> what happened? Uh, yeah, what happened? No, I, I don't think I sold out. Or maybe I did. Of course, never, ever. But yeah, no, it's, it's you just... Never, you never did anything you didn't want to do. I did plenty of what I didn't want to do. But oh. that's what I Cape State of itself. <laughs> But look, so okay, so back back to this whole thing. So so these days, I, I just to say, these days I'm making music more so for my own edification or for fun. Um, that's not true. I still have some projects that I'm working with. I'm I'm doing this Duque de Prima project where we're trying to make not exactly business techno, but we're you know trying to make uh, that type of stuff. Uh, but a lot of the times, I find myself just kind of going over to the equipment and just start to twiddle with the knobs and play with things and then three hours went by and i didn't even record anything and then i'm like mm. oh, okay well it's time for lunch now and then come back and not even continue with it later because it's just because you know my money doesn't come from there now you know i'm not i'm not touring mm -hmm. nobody is really right now but even before that i wasn't touring for for a while i had been i had been all into education so things have changed for me and the way that I make music. It's interesting though, because you I've been thinking about making more music to 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 release. And I have to, and this this whole kind of uh, series that we're doing here or I'm doing here it, it is really about maybe even getting myself back into this kind of mindset and kind of carving out the mindset that I want to be in for my next kind of chapter of, of productions that I'll be I'll be, you know, making. What do you think, John? What's about you? What where do you stand right now in it? Um, well, I have a couple of outlets as you know, thinking in terms of being a producer, like the continued relationship with Christian Smith is, you know, that's all it's like that's all as long as he continues to keep Tronic going and his DJ career going and our production team up, I mean, because he works with other people too. Like he's always, he's out there. He's always been more of a go getter in terms of like building up his profile than I have. I've been kind of more in the backseat the whole time. And that's just, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. I've always just, I like collaborating with people and I like just kind of going to my own pace. And I'm not like a, a, a self promoter, let's say. But as long as he's there and we're friends and, you know, we're friends regardless of what happens with music and techno, um, that will always be an avenue to express myself in a certain range. And same thing with, with Jason and serotonin is like we built up a label and a sound and a style and a, and a way of making music together that works for us. And as long as we're interested in doing it, that will always be there. And that kind of like, you know, those are sort of the main areas for me right now creatively. Aside from that, I'm, I think I'm kind of more on where, where you are, because, you know, I've been teaching, obviously, and a, a lot of my new ideas for music come from stuff I do in class, actually. Like, I'll demonstrate, I'll come up with musical ideas to demonstrate in a class, and sometimes they're, you know, eh. <laughs> but other times, I'll, I'll, I'll surprise myself, because... Because I'm not trying to, you know, be business techno or to be like serotonin electro funk. I'm just doing whatever comes sort of naturally in the moment, and that really lets me, you know, I, I already said I'm moody and and I have ADD and I change my attention and how I feel, and changing how I feel changes the music that I'm doing. So that's kind of like my my making music for myself in a way because I'm only doing what feels right in that moment, and and then sometimes I come across something where I'm like, oh, this is great. I really want to finish this. And then I take that and I, then I switch into my producer mode and go, okay, I need to make this work like this. Like, okay, here's this, you know, I made this sketch in synth class and it came out sounding like, you know, it could be a cool thing for serotonin. So like, I'll make, I'll schedule some time for myself to have a session to like arrange it and build it into a track that I'll put on my next release for serotonin. But I didn't get there thinking, oh, I need to make something for serotonin and I got to follow these rules. It just happened naturally. And I think set, making a situation for yourself where you can just kind of relax and not worry about 
the the stress of a goal or or even if you don't yet have the ability to meet the goal that you're trying to learn how to do and just letting yourself play and have fun with the music process or the synthesis process or whatever it is then you're more likely to get somewhere cool and interesting mm. after repeated attempts sounds like you have a lot to say about this sounds like you've been bottling it up as well <laughs> But uh, this is just how I am. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Well, thanks for joining us. And tomorrow your show is at 1 p.m., I guess. I believe so. Okay. So 1 p.m., everybody tune in to see uh, John's uh, show at <laughs> Subway Techno Saturdays. You can't say, yep. can we say Taco Saturdays? That doesn't, just doesn't sound right. No. Doesn't sound no. And I never did actually do anything with tacos. So I think we have to let that one go. Okay. Let's do that. Um, all right, then, John. Thanks for, for joining us. And uh, we're starting Thanks to run out of time here. I'm just going to close up. But uh, everybody tune in tomorrow to see John's show at uh, 1 p.m. I, I know that I will want to do that, but I'm actually teaching at that time. So um, <laughs> sorry, John. Um, <laughs> I'll watch it after in the rerun. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Take care. You're welcome. Adios. All right, everybody. So um, so here we are. We're kind of getting to the end of our show. I wanted to kind of just get with you guys uh, finally and just look at some of these comments that have been coming in. Uh, lots of really cool stuff. Uh, you guys are really, really, really happy to see such involvement on, in the chat. I feel like I'm here with a bunch of friends just hanging out. Um, let's see. I uh, wanted to say hello to some people. Uh, John H. Kingston III from Far Rockaway or Rockaway Park, sorry, from Rockaway Park, New York. Uh, welcome. Um, let's see. Some people that say, somebody says, I tried Pendulate for its MPE uh, facility, but I, but it didn't sound fun. Oh, wait a second. But it didn't. I don't know what that means. Sound fun, but no MPE. Hopefully they fix it. So MPE is, uh, I think, multidimensional polyphonic uh, aftertouch or expressions. Um, this, uh, this only certain DAWs and, and controllers can actually get that going. Um, let's see what we have here. Uh, Andrew Duke says, I approach remixes the same way Mr. Selway does. Yep. Um, and, uh, and that's what he said, the small business techno thing. And... All right, so lots of happening, uh, lots of stuff happening in the chat here. Again, guys, really, 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 give me your questions, send them in, write them in the chat. I'm trying to be more proactive about monitoring the chat and seeing what you guys got in there. Ask me anything, but may, you know, basically try to keep it on the on the subject uh, at hand. And. Uh, um, you know, send in maybe even if you want later or in the comments, you can write some questions. I'm, I'm looking for them all the time because I really want to sit here and, and answer your questions and talk about what your challenges and concerns are. Uh, once again, we're, um, we're 343 Labs and this is 343 TV. Uh, today you're watching me, Abe Duque. I had a lower third set up and I don't know, let me see if I switch between my overhead See the overhead work. The lower third works on the overhead. Does the over lower third work? No, it doesn't work when I go back to my. I don't know why. Uh, I had it set up and it's not working right now. So my name is Abe Duque. For those that don't know, um, I um, I am a musician and, and an instructor at uh, at three four three Labs, and I also I am a streamer now. Look at that. I at this late stage of my life, I developed into something else. Now <laughs> I'm a streamer. Um, and, um, I'm here every Friday. I'll be here till at least the end of December, every Friday, um, um, you know, talking to you guys, maybe if Friday falls on a uh, Christmas falls on a Friday, I might not be here on a Friday, but I'll be here every Friday other than, a, you know, a major holiday or something like that. Um, uh, streaming with you guys, talking to you guys, uh, dealing with, uh, your concerns for the next Four, four weeks or so and this is the way we've been doing it with this show anyway we started it being a bit wig show for about you know a month and then we went to to um to hardware for a while and now we're into just talking about everything to do with production so we will be now i promise you that we will actually be producing in this class or with this stream i i I tend to make classes online in this scenario as well so i'm, I'm always thinking we're in a class 
but we are in a class somehow, right? Uh, so um, I, the, uh, you know, I promise that we will start laying out ideas. We will start uh, getting going uh, as early as next class. I will try very hard to get uh, people in here, uh, producers, friends of mine that know, uh, you know, have been making music and, and, and working on music and for, for, for some time now and have experience and try to pick their brains about the whole process of things. So get ready for that. Because that's uh you know it, that that could be a lot of fun. So uh, once again, please send in your comments and your questions though, so we can interact. Um, okay, um, let's see. Just one last look at the at the uh, at the chat here. Uh, TS Project says thanks, Abe and John, and thanks to everybody who tuned in today. Um, okay, that's uh, I believe that's our our, our uh, 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 TS Project. Is that is that Tetro? <laughs> um, I, I'm. It might just be, um, uh, three four three labs. I think that's Thomas in the background with, with saying thanks everyone and with three four three labs. I saw Max in here earlier as well. Uh, Andrew Duke says have a good weekend, Abe. I will, but I'll be having a great weekend teaching. I'm actually teaching. I'm starting a new class tomorrow. I'm starting a basics uh, Ableton basics class online. Uh, from tw uh, tw 12 to 2 or something like that, 12, 15 to 2, and then I have a mixing and mastering class after that. And then on Sunday, I have two classes as well. So I'll be, my hands will be full with teaching this weekend. Um, but I don't mind because I kind of love it. it. It gets me, it gets me, it puts me in a good mood. Actually, I could be in the worst mood in the world. And as soon as I start talking and teaching, I just go into this other world and everything disappears. It's the most therapeutic thing I could do with myself. Um, let's see. Uh, who else is here? Jonathan Rodriguez says, Dave and John, thanks for keeping it real. Uh, Robert Dharma does the Spock uh, hand. Um, and then he says, that is Thomas. And uh, BPMS says, thanks, y'all. And I thank you guys for coming in here, sharing this time of your day with me and letting you uh, letting me come into your uh I guess computer screens or, or or telephone screens or whatever type of screen you're watching me on and uh, entertain you or just visit with you. Let's say uh, I got to start talking like a Mr. Rogers type of person or maybe a Pee Wee, like Pee Wee's Playhouse. Anyway, all right, guys, I think that's all we have for today. I'm going to sign off now and uh, keep, uh, keep the likes up going, keep subscribing and Come and take a class with us at 343. Bye. 